guys, I'm going to talk about best reasons for a man to stay single. I picked up on this on another MGTOW channel. Um, and basically, I wanted to talk about this because I do find some of the stuff on MGTOW can be quite strong. And I do get it because at the end of the day, different things happen to different people. And this is why I'm sort of putting my version of the same thing going on. Um, the first thing was risks v rewards relating to relationships now there are, there's obviously stress on living together marriage kids etc where financially that is all against the guy in the first place and i get all that um but i also recognize that from a male point of view um or a human point of view you may actually want kids and the the risk factor is quite high for men in that in that sense of wanting to have a solid relationship but i do recommend that in that case there's nothing that says you have to marry this week this year this next five years there's nothing that says that you have to have kids early on either you know especially if you're in the younger like um coming out of your teens into your 20s 30s there's no rush you know at the end of the day there is no rush that pushes you into those realms of doing everything early so everything to fall flat in its face enjoy life first because one of the things you see it in the philippines as well there's push to get married early on and this pattern exists and it's why you'll find a lot of women in the philippines that have kids and the husband's nowhere in sight because they were encouraged to marry early and as such, the guys have found other women elsewhere or didn't want the responsibility, whatever. But the point being is, in the Philippines, they recognize it afterwards. And in the West, I think people need to recognize this themselves. I'm not just talking about men, I'm talking about women doing the same. There is no rush to get into a relationship. There is no expectation beyond your own that matters the expectation of the two parties involved should actually have value if it doesn't it's pointless you've got to have a relationship that has some solid ground rules some solid expectations some solid delivery and if you're not even getting that and you're just thinking but i love them then you're already set for failure uh, so my point on that risk fees reward um i would say if you're going into the a relationship just based on meeting somebody seeing how it goes decide to get married have kids then that risk is way overboard um i wouldn't advise anybody to do that but if you're talking about people that have a relationship built on a long period of time people that do actually understand each other etc then the risk is reduced you know but at the same time if you're 100% into MGTOW and have no interest in getting in a relationship, etc., I respect that as well. But uh, what I want to push out there, though, is not everything is so cut and dry. A lot of it is how you look at things in the first place. Looking at the relationship, the foundations of it, what the, what the expectations are, what is going to be the outcome of this, what are the driving forces behind this because if it isn't that you have to get married don't um but realize that there are risks there if you recognize the risks you recognize the association of why you need to put these assessments in place to protect yourself from things going wrong nothing wrong with that it makes common sense to do that um and then the next one was women have become too entitled. I understand that completely. Um, in the Western world, it is exactly that. When, when I've dealt with some stuff in the UK, it's not just around uh, relationships, but a lot of it around like social housing and stuff you get this very abusive push to you i have a right you know what it's not a right 
It's a theft. It's a theft for mothers to pay for parasitical social classes that have no will to work, etc. And it's normally those ones that I have a right that are doing that because other people aspire to actually get themselves out of poverty or it's not exactly poverty in the UK these days, but the they try to push themselves forward. They propel themselves where they can. And I can understand it being very frustrating if you're unskilled, uneducated or whatever. But it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world and you have a right. The smart money actually invests in themselves because if you're unemployed, you can go to college and stuff. You'll get a lot of help from the state because of that. Um, you can go in full-time education. You can improve yourself. There's nothing stopping you doing it. Um, but if you, your life revolves around super strength cider and a shooting up with heroin, then obviously it's a little bit different. Um, so I would say the entitlements the stuff, I've said it so many times, and it's not just from women, it's from guys as well, from social. Now, the, the reason I bring up social welfare is that it's where the breeding ground of this is. That's where it's come from. This is where the false sense of entitlement come from. Because in the old days, people used to stay together because they stayed with the husband because the husband generated the, the money and the money wasn't coming from state. The system changed to say, well, she needs to look after the kids. She needs to bring up the kids. You need to make sure you can get the money out of this guy, regardless of the reasons why this relationship is failing. Um, so you've got to understand that it comes from social welfare originally and has just slowly expanded out over time into more and more things because from a state point of view, it removes responsibility for the state. They love that. They love it. And I've, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. It's like the NHS. Anytime you talk about wages in the NHS and the fact that it bludgeons money out of people like no tomorrow, they instantly go, like a Hannibal Lecter, bloody cart, wheeling out nurses and doctors. That's all you have in the NHS. No, you don't. You have chief, chief executives. You've got chief executives that fail, and for example, one that actually killed people uh, due to the MSRA, and they call it MSRA, it's the polite, word, it's a polite way of saying filth, dirty hospitals. Um, she then was moved to another hospital in the next district, chief exec, consultant on MSRA. Um, no. Jail sentence, thank you very much. But UK, anytime you conflict with that, because the NHS is probably the biggest socialist movement out there, it is pushed in the direction of there is only doctors and nurses. Fire brigade, retire early and have still got years of work in them. Guess what? Another one, you're not allowed to contest the stuff that goes on at the higher levels of that. Police force, exactly the same. They're all socialist at the end of the day. They're all socialist and tied to the state. They're parasitical and feed off every other taxpayer. I say every other taxpayer because obviously they do pay some tax because they obviously have earnings from the tax system to pay them. Um, but obviously they get a pension fund that's far greater than the majority of the people that are actually paying for their pensions. But that's another story for another day. But the false sense of entitlement has been pushed from that point. It's from the welfare state. Adding to that, there is the thing relating to the women should automatically get the children. I don't agree with that either. Methadone Mary, um, methadone Mary or whatever, she shouldn't be get, getting her he kids. And then they'll be like, oh yeah, but she's a drug addict because, you know, she doesn't have her kids. She doesn't have her kids because she's a drug addict. That's it. And it doesn't matter if that's male or female. Because maybe this sounds a little bit strange, but in the equality world, doesn't parents involve two people? You know, at the end of the day, who says that the mother is a better person than the, the father? Who says that the, the mother automatically is the better provider? At the same time, looking over at the guy over here saying, you're going to give up three quarters of your salary to pay for her standard of living. And she ain't going to work because she doesn't have to. 
society, socialism, driven back to the welfare state, pushing forward, that started from the, the original having to drag the, the husband out on a Friday night and search his pockets at the pub to pay for the bills and stuff for the rest of the week for the family. But the thing is, that was not all men. That's the joke in this, because that becomes the symbol in the same way as the NHS only has doctors and nurses and not chief executives. Because you then go, it's because of this. It's like, yes, it's that's so far back in history that it's not even on black and white TV. It's in sketch form. It's not a basis of today. I would find that the, the majority of men are probably more accommodating now than they probably have ever been in time. In that sense of trying to keep everyone happy. But a lot of people don't even know what happiness is. And it's the same with health and safety and feminism. It's the same thing. Feminism has run out of things to complain about. So it's now got to the point where it's now rewriting things and going into other realms to complain. Health and safety does the same. It's got to the point where it's so stupid with a lot of health and safety, but they're still trying to create an industry out of it. Instead of just saying, I think we're pretty much there. Because you can take that f from last year's and put it on this year's. And you can take that because it's the same type of maintenance or whatever. Oh, the instructions are the same. This is a TV, that's a TV. It's the same instructions. I don't need to review them. They just go, refer to article 23 or whatever and they just copy it job done no i'd lose a job for that so they create more industry um and i do think that's that's the reality with all this stuff it's constantly pushing because they've run out of things to complain about um so i recognize that and as people bring up as a single person male or female it's the same issues where you're having to pay out more for X, Y, and Z. You're a higher risk on the insurance for car insurance, etc. You you have to pay more tax because you people with families need more than you do. And I know I'm already I can feel people already arguing with me on that. Guess what? That's the justification. All goes back to welfare state. Okay. So the next point was um, best reason for a man to stay single: more time and energy for yourself agree with that 110 percent now this isn't about uh people not doing what they like doing because this is this is very different what this is talking about is i'll give you some examples from my old relationship um because it fits in with this quite well i used to work a 16 hour day um pretty much six days a week then i would do call outs um at like three o'clock in the morning stuff for robberies and things I would come home and find that my ex-partner decided to strip the wallpaper in the dining room, for example. She wants to paint this weekend. She wants to decorate. Now, the thing is, I'm tired. I've just finished work. But she's all like, oh yeah, only take a few hours. Because she only works part time. Now, this is what that's talking about. More time and energy for yourself is because you get roped into stuff that is not for you. It's not um, beneficial to you. Now you're gonna go, oh yeah, but you get the, it's a nice beautification, a nice room. But there was nothing wrong with it before she destroyed it anyway. It's now that she stripped it all, you've now gotta redo it all, all over your weekend that you were looking forward to. Um, but on top of that, you then get into things like she used to have horses and cause she didn't drive, she needs to be back and forth to the stables multiple times of the day. There is a prime example. Now, if you're single, and uh, this is why it's important to be single, is that time is yours. That time is yours. Like myself, I would have liked to have rested more in flying lessons and been doing flying. But you get roped into all this other stuff that's got nothing to do with you. And it's not even stuff you're interested in. I have no interest in horses. And that was one of the big arguments we had ages ago. Because the, the, the fact was, she, her assumption is I would have to get interested because I'm being dragged to the stables regularly. Instead, I just sat in the car with the radio on. 
because I had no interest in horses. I've never had any interest in them. But that is a prime example of having time and energy for yourself because you, the fact is the time you develop things for yourself. When I first went to the Philippines, I recognized this a lot more because when I went to the Philippines, there were certain things that just stood out straight away. The first thing is you're used to working for a specific goal, you know, pay the bills, doing this, pay your credit cards, um, paying for the lease on your car, the car that pays for you, that you go to work to earn money to pay the lease on the car, all these sort of things. When you went to the Philippines, all that's removed because you're now sat in front of a computer screen. There is very little job opportunities for foreigners in the Philippines. You start stepping back, re-educating, retraining, and striving for independence. And I know some people mention about being frugal with things, which allows them to have more savings, which means they can focus on things, on investments and stuff. This, for me, started with the Philippines because what happened was all the stuff that I got roped into and tied to in the West was all now removed. So I started doing blogging, website designs, and this is all before YouTube being paid any money out. So I didn't do YouTube, I did websites. And then I generated revenues online, people were paying for advertising space, I was just doing other business pieces, I eventually got a call center. Um, the point being is you evolve into something new because I had the time to develop it. In Western society, having that time is often taken by others. You see, they're taken by the relationship of the sort of things I was just talking about, or it's taken by things like um, having bureaucracy, like having a SOAR notification is the most simple one, steps three off road notification. Now the government knows if your car's on or off the road anyway, but the point is they make you fill in a piece of paperwork so you can forget it, so you can be fined if your car is a you haven't put the notice in or b your car is found on the road um, so they can crush it but the point is if you can identify that people are wasting your time on this sort of stuff and that there is bureaucracy there and you start to prepare yourself for it and streamline it to deal with it like i was saying before relating to my mother-in-law's processing of visas and stuff for uh, coming to spain you start to realize you can control these bits Instead of focusing and waiting for the next step when you have no date, process it, move to the next thing, do something else. When you get to the next stage, they'll bring it back to you anyway. And that's the thing, that's how you should focus on those things. So I understand that completely um, because you get more time and energy for yourself, including the ability to travel. Because a lot of time when it comes to traveling, like say taking six months to go somewhere or whatever, if you're with somebody, hey, a lot of them will actually quell that to stop you leaving because a lot of the majority of women I know don't actually want to move away from home or do that sort of stuff. But B, you could end up paying for it, which then also gives you another reason for not doing it. So having that independence allows you, being single, to do stuff that you wouldn't be able to do in many cases, as either a couple, and definitely not as a married couple, um, unless you have found somebody that has very, very similar um, attributes, interests, and everything else as you to strive it forward. So I do get that. And that gets on to choices in career, which is also tied with that, because a lot of the time, if you're in a relationship, your career can be manipulated to suit. When I was out in the Middle East, the directors that were with me were getting calls from their wives telling them they must go back to the UK, otherwise they are getting divorced. Bear in mind this is an $80 million contract and it is fundamental to them having a job. Um, it was a, a must-win contract in the sense the company was going bankrupt, so it needed this contract to go through. Yet their wives were more concerned about themselves having to deal with their children while their husbands are out in the Middle East working in some very di difficult environments and, and telling them to go home like little children. So there's another reason for staying single. You will find that you can propel your career path forward. As a single person, that could take you up to director level very easily in some companies if you're in at the right time, right level, etc. Now, 
The other thing is recognizing that you can be disposed of. Now, as a disposal thing, what that recognizes is like your cannon fodder, in the sense that in a war, your cannon fodder. Um, it's very few places that allow women to get into um, frontline fighting. But on the other side of this, you've got to understand that if your wife or whatever is unhappy with you, files for divorce, you are disposable. You can be replaced, but ultimately you can be replaced and still paying for their lifestyle. So I do understand that as well. And that's one of the important things that I do recommend being aware of. You are disposable. From companies, your disposal is, is imminent often because quite simply, how many zero hour contracts, short term contracts and that are out there now? That you are replaceable, nobody needs you anymore. And in recognizing that, you can combat it because you start to see that it's not all about working for somebody else. A lot of time it's working for you and working things for your future because the company, let's be honest, most of them couldn't care less about you. They tell you they do, they have a policy for that. The reality is most of them don't. Um, I've got to rush because we're going to go out in a minute. Um, the next one is freedom. Now the freedom bit goes back to the points I was saying relate to work. Work, you can choose. When I went to the Philippines, it un unlocked um, the ability to find new ways to earn an income. Here in Spain, we've been here for years and pretty much we live on the stuff I do outside of the work. I don't need to leave the house to earn an income. Um, but that comes from realizing that you do not need a nine to five. You do not need to be pushed into something. You need to recognize that you have more abilities. Online training is on your door. But I, I recommend online training more than universities and other environments that are often pre-programmed only to work with what they have. It's much better to study, like I'm doing at the moment, more day trading stuff from multiple sources so I can confirm the information. And it's not based on whether um, some is universally acceptable by trading schools or whatever, but actually it works, which is the bit I'm interested in. I don't need to know the background about a lot of things like spending um, a month researching somebody because they come up with this, because they were, you know, whatever. You know, when I look at Elliott Waves, I just need to understand what Elliott Waves are. Don't really need to know about the guy at all. I, I just need to understand what he's doing, what how this works, how he come about it. Beyond that, I don't need to know his family history and everything else. So that sort of thing, I do recommend that the freedom comes with that. You've got freedom of independence, the freedom of financial ability to look after yourself, the freedom to make your own choices and your own decisions. But it's not just based on male, female, but simply you get the freedom to control everything. You know, at the end of the day, you unlock things by moving away, uh, which is MGTOW, moving away from a lot of the things that society says you must do and you must follow. When you start moving away from things like going out for drinking sessions on a regular basis, instead investing in something, you've just gained five years on a lot of the people you're sitting there normally drinking with on a Saturday night because they don't do that. They're not programmed to do that. They look for that drink on a Friday night because their work is mundane and boring. But at the same time, they're not doing anything to change it. They're not looking at how I can make myself better. How can I get myself out of this? And that comes from understanding independence, self-development, and looking at other options there to generate financial security for the long term. The main thing in this would be sustainability and moving things forward. Thanks for watching.